In number six, we are looking to see what reagents are needed to make this into an alcohol. So if you remember, to get an alcohol, there are things that we can do. We can use an alkene, which is not practical here because this already has four double or four bonds, so we can't make an extra double bond there. But what we can do is switch out this group for a Br. So if this came from a Br, we can just do an SN2 reaction, and we can put a bromine on that benzylic position using NBS. and then doing uh, an SN2 with sodium hydroxide. Here we are naming some compounds. And these are both esters. First you want to name the R group that is on the other side of the oxygen. This is one carbon, so this is methyl. And then you name this as if it was a carboxylic acid. This would be benzoic acid. You drop the ic acid and use O8. So this is methyl benzo. So we drop the ic acid and use 8 methyl benzoate. In F here, this is on the other side of the oxygen. And if it's just a benzene ring, this is phenyl. And you can use ethan instead of ethanoic acid. You drop the ic acid and then end it with eight. This one could also be phenyl acetate. And that one would be the common name. Here we're looking at a mechanism to see how this acid and hydride can be made. All of the mechanisms in this chapter are very similar to each other. It starts with a nucleophile that's going to attack the carbonyl electrophile. So those electrons will go up to form that tetrahedral intermediate. So everything on that oxygen comes along. And we have our tetrahedral intermediate. And if the electrons on the oxygen can come down to kick off a leaving group, in this case chlorine, it will do that. and then we reform that double bond to get the acid and hydride. Here's another mechanism, and this is to make an ester. This is the Fischer esterification. So we're going to do a proton transfer. And note that this is an acid reacting and not an carbonyl or aldehyde, aldehyde or ketone. So methanol is going to attack here. The hydrogen is still here. And we're going to get a proton transfer. And this oxygen can reform a double bond. And then there's a proton transfer to get to the ester. All right, here we're looking for reagents to convert these pentene, this is one pentene, into pentanoic acid. Okay, 
So we're not adding any carbons here. We need to make this into an alcohol so that we can oxidize it. So we use BH3 because we want that alcohol on the end. And then we can just do the Jones oxidation to get it to the carboxylic acid. For one bromobutane, we need to get pentanoic acid, which means that we need to add a carbon. So we can use a Grignard. Since we're only adding one carbon as a carboxylic acid, we can just use CO2 followed by water. Predict the major product. If you have an acid chloride with this uh, lithium reagent, that's going to reduce it to the aldehyde. And then if we react it with the Grignard plus water, so this is steps two and three, we're going to form a carbon bond and an alcohol with an addition of an ethyl group there. Here we are trying to make an ester from an alcohol. So one thing that you can do is if remember we can make an ester from carboxylic acid and we can make a carboxylic acid from the alcohol. So we need to oxidize this. You can use KMnO4. We don't want to use PCC because that will stop it at the aldehyde. This will go all the way to the alcohol or the carboxylic acid. And then we can just use the Fischer esterification. So ethanol in the presence of acid will get us to that ester. And this one we're going from an alkene to the ester, and notice that we're losing a carbon. And so what we can think about is an ozonolysis reaction where we slice that there. So if we would, if we do an ozonolysis reaction under oxidative conditions, so O3, and instead of using DMS, we can just use water. That will get us the carboxylic acid right off the bat and then we can use ethanol plus acid again to get that ester. Here we're predicting products. If we are using excess lithium aluminum hydride, this is a reducing reagent or a source of H minus, that's going to first attack right there. So this will become an alcohol. And when you do that, you're cleaving this bond here. So if you're counting carbons here, It'll be one, two, three, four, five. This is the leaving group, that oxygen there. And so that will become the alcohol. So you'll have two alcohols there. If you treat sodium hydroxide with the carboxylic acid, this can remove this proton, making that O minus, which can then attack the ethyl iodide. So you'd have O minus ethyl iodide, which will get kicked off. And this is another way to form an ester. In this problem, we're looking to synthesize this ester from a nitrile. So one of the things that I'm noticing here is that there's addition of two methyl groups. So that makes me think of um, this could have been an alcohol. So if I had this alcohol plus some acid chloride, 
I could have done that step. And before this alcohol, if I add these two methyl groups and an OH, that makes me think of a Grignard, where I could have had benzaldehyde and attacked it with two Grignard reactions, or two Grignard reagents. You could also attack an acid chloride with excess Grignard and get the same thing as well. And the excess or the acid chloride may be easier to get to from the nitrile than the aldehyde is. You can also, in another step, um, you can make reactive Grignard with the nitrile. one time and then do that again, the same thing. So that might be the quickest method here is to go through that. So I'll just do that in green here. So the first step is to use a Grignard, so CH3MGBR and water. So that is going to make our carbonyl and add the carbon. We can add the Grignard again. So we've added the two methyl groups and then we can use acetic anhydride to acetylate our alcohol there in the presence of something, a base like pyridine, which will remove that hydrogen, and then that can happen there. So if you wanted to go for the acid chloride, you could. We would just hydrolyze this, the H plus in water. To go to the carboxylic acid, use thionyl chloride. And then excess Grignard. And then do the same step with the acetic anhydride or you could use a Williamson kind of ether type synthesis. So NaH and then add an acid chloride here. That would be another way to do that synthesis. Here we are looking at products of with hexanoyl chloride. with each of the reagents. So this would be the same thing as that right there. So in this case, we would make an anhydride. With the cuprate, we're just going to add one of the ethyl groups. So that makes a ketone. But if you had excess Grignard, that's going to make the alcohol. So we add two ethyl groups and that we protonate the alcohol. Now here we're doing synthesis with benzene. We need to make a carboxylic acid, which we can do from a Grignard and CO2. That would be one way to do that reaction. And this we can make from a Friedel craft with benzene.
from that one that there. So we need to add isopropyl chloride. So if we're starting with benzene, we do the Friedel-Craft with aluminum trichloride. We use NBS to put that bromine there. Add a Grignard. Then we add carbon dioxide and water. Okay, here we're synthesizing another or an ester, and this might be a similar strategy where we use a Grignard. And we can't add the ester directly, but we can make that once we form the acid. So if I turn this into a Grignard, We add carbon dioxide and water. So that will add one carbon. And then I do the Fischer esterification. All right, here we're adding two carbons and we have a ketone. Uh, this makes me think of maybe an acid chloride. With a cuprate. So I would need to make the acid chloride first by oxidizing this. That's a primary alcohol, so that will go all the way to the carboxylic acid. I use thionyl chloride. And then the ethyl cuprate with water. And then you want to remember that there should be two R groups there, even though you're adding only one of them. Here is another synthesis. We're adding this right here. And we can do that via a Grignard reaction. And we want to add it to an aldehyde here. and not a carboxylic acid a derivative um, like an ester or an acid chloride because that would add multiple times. So we just want to add it the one time and then we can oxidize it. And then you can use PCC to oxidize. All right, here we're filling in different reagents. So from carboxylic acid to thionyl chloride, that's SOCl2. Oops. To get from the acid chloride back to the carboxylic acid, that's just water. 
and acid chloride to the aldehyde, you want to use that lithium OR3. And for ester to aldehyde, that's you can use dibel. Acid chloride to the bottom here, the amide. I'm going to have an excess of ammonia. If I go acid chloride to the ester, that one's just an alcohol in the presence of acid. Uh, acid chloride to the anhydride. You can use NaO acetate. Once you form the anhydride, to get to the ester, you just use an alcohol with H+. Plus. And the acid anhydride to acid here is going to be water in H+. Plus. If you want to go from acid to the anhydride, you can use the acid chloride. Um, carboxylic acid to ester is H plus and alcohol again. And to go backwards from an ester to the acid, that's H plus and water. From an ester to an amide, that's going to be excess ammonia, H plus. And then an amide to the acid is going to be H plus and water. All right, propose a synthesis here. So we're forming an acetal, and we're also adding carbons. An acetal, which is this carbon right here, came from a ketone. Which we can uh, make and add the carbons through an acid chloride. So I make the acid chloride with thionyl chloride. And I just want to add one carbon chain, so the two uh, ethyl group there, one ethyl group there, and have the carbonyl. I'm going to save myself a step and not make um, extra work and have to oxidize it. So if I use the cuprate, So there's two of these cuprate or ethyl groups with the coprolithium. That will add one carbonyl with the ethyl group. And then to get to the acetal, I have an alcohol with two carbons in the presence of acid. All right, in this problem, I lose the methoxy, and I have a thioacetal. So this came from this aldehyde, which we can get from the ester, using dibel. That makes the aldehyde. And then to get to the thioacetal, it's the same thing. The S2Hs with the two carbons in between.